Hi, my name is Beth Massey and welcome to the Windows Forms Over Data video series. In this next video, we're going to talk about how we can create autocomplete functionality on combo boxes and text boxes. Anytime we're creating controls that are likely to take on repeated or predictable values, you should consider providing autocomplete functionality for your users. So we've been creating an application called the Order Manager and I have that open now. I've created a new form and just called it Form 7. So what I'm going to do first to just demonstrate some of this functionality is I'm going to just drag some controls onto this form I've created. And that's the combo box and the text box. And we can inspect some of these new properties in the, from the property sheet here. So let's take a look. Auto-complete sort, custom source, auto-complete mode, and autocomplete source are the three properties that control what's inside and how the autocompletion works. So autocomplete mode, we have a choice of suggest, append, or suggest append. And what that means is suggest means it's going to drop down just like here as we type some suggestions, but it's not going to force that suggestion on us on the text that we're typing. Append means it's going to actually append right into the text box the suggestions that it's made. And then suggest and pend means it's going to show if there's multiple suggestions, it'll show multiple ones in the list, and except that it'll append the first one in the list. Okay, so let's take a look at suggest append. And for the source, out of the box we have some choices. We have um, our file system, our history list, our recently used list, any of the URLs or system resources. We could just choose file system directories or we can choose custom source. So we'll take a look at what custom source is in a little bit. Um, or we have list items here. And list items means that if we have this combo box bound to a data source, um, it, we can choose from the data source that it's bound to. And I'll show an example of that too. So for this one, let's just choose a uh, recently used list. And for the text box, we'll just make this an append mode. And I'll choose, um, how about all URLs? Okay, so let's take a look at how this reacts when we type. Hit F5, and now when I type MSDN, you'll see that it's appending and suggesting sites that I visited. Okay, and now with the text box, you'll see that it, it's not suggesting because we set it to just append. C colon. Okay, so that's how autocomplete works. So now we want to hook this up to some data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a form that I've already started. Form 6 here. And this is just a product description editor. I've got a product data set that I've created that just has one table in it, product. And this little form allows us to scroll through the products as we flip through this combo box and edit their descriptions. So let's just run this to see how it works. So hit F5 and this will load up the products that we have here. And as we scroll through, we can edit the descriptions in the box. Okay. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to add autocomplete functionality to this drop down here. So how do we do that? So what we do is we set up the data binding mode on the combo box first. So what I did is I just dragged the product table onto my combo box and it automatically set up the data source and display member here. So the product binding source is our data source. So now we want to set up the autocomplete to display only what's inside our product binding source. So first I'll set the autocomplete mode to suggest and the autocomplete source will then be the list items. So list items means that it'll display what's in product binding source. So let's hit F5 to test this. And you'll see now that if I type OR, you'll, I'll get a list of the oranges, juice, and the Oreos, which is exactly what it should be. If I type A, I only have one product, apples. Great. So next I want to go over exactly what a 
custom source is. So instead of having the list items as our source, we're going to select custom source instead. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the, some code and we're going to specify a custom source. So what a custom source really is, is it's just a string collection of values. So we're going to want to create a string collection of values. Let's just choose, say, all the O products, just for this example. So I'm going to add some code to the load event. I'm going to create O products as new autocomplete string collection. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say for each product as product data set in our product data set Then, if it starts with O, we're going to add that product to O products. Okay, so we build up the autocomplete string collection, and then we just have to set this to the combo boxes autocomplete custom source. Okay? So let's uh, hit a 5 and see if this works. So now, when I type D or R or A, I don't get any of those suggestions. But if I type O, you'll see I get orange juice and Oreo. So those are the only things that it's going to be suggesting for me. I can still use the drop-down. Okay, so that's how we can create auto-completion for our users. So if they're typing in rep repetitive values, then it's always good to give them some sort of autocomplete so that it's easier and faster for them to enter the data into their controls. Great! So I'd like to thank you for your time. If you'd like to check out the Visual Basic Developer Center, we'll be posting updates to these videos there. Please also check out the Visual Basic Team blog and my blog for more information. Thanks again!